Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with the start of a new reading vlog for one book, but it is a book that I'm nervous to read because, oh my god, it has 73 thousand ratings on goodreads and this book came out january 13th so over the last six months this indie book has over 73,000 ratings i would be shocked if it didn't show up on the best books of 2020 for goodreads it is constantly in the top 20 on amazon six months later it was like number two i took a screenshot i'll post it here about a week ago of it being number two i think in the kindle store this book has been everywhere people will not stop talking about it I got it on audio and audible during one of their sales and that is things we never got over by lucy score i have very high expectations for this book everybody's been loving it i don't think i've seen a single person hate this book and so i wanted to vlog it because this one i'm a little nervous because it's about twins i'm a twin myself i live with my twin sister we are super close and i know that the heroine is an identical twin and her twin is a very bad person and so she does not get along with her twin she's going to like visit her and someone steals her car and she is stuck like with her 12 year old niece and like everybody hates her because they think she's her twin and then i think it's a small town i think the hero is really grumpy that's really all i know so i don't know what's gonna happen in this long book because it's a 16 hour audiobook i just got finished with a 16 hour audiobook i read two mariana zapata books in a row i'm a little over the long books but i wanted to do this video so i have the audio it is a goal for me today to catch up on my bullet journal so i just finished like the last hour and a half of Underlock by mariana zapata so i'm gonna pop in things we never got over and listen to that while i finish up i'm working on may right now i never finished my may spreads so i'm gonna finish may and then start on my june stuff so i did see lucy score posted she was in usa today bestseller i don't know i think it was the top 100 i'm not sure but she says it's super super difficult to do if you're an indie kindle unlimited author because kindle unlimited sales don't count towards that i think and she got that list so she is just doing what she needs to do with this book and i don't know how people heard of this i do know some people love lucy score her books were never like super on my radar so i am interested to read this book especially because like seventy-two thousand ratings on goodreads is astounding for a book that means a lot of people are reading your book so i don't know if lucy scores other books are like as fame popular and successful as this one i do love this cover uh, one of my friends told me they really like by a thread i really don't like the cover by a thread it's just like pink with hangers on it oh this one does has 38 almost 38,000 reviews ratings on goodreads so people have been reading her books and i feel like i see her a lot in the top on amazon but she's one of those authors that i'm like i never see my friends reading her but i've seen tons of people read things we never got over on every social media platform so we'll see if i like it I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna hopefully finish by tomorrow. That's my goal. I do listen to audiobooks at three times speed. Yes, I can understand it perfectly fine. Yes, audiobook listening is reading. I don't want to start that fight. Anytime I'm on TikTok, people want to get all whiny about people cheating. Reading's not a race. People can read how they want to, including listen to audiobooks. So I'm listening to the audio. Hopefully it has a good narrator. And I'm going to read some today. I'm probably not gonna work out tomorrow. I always listen to my audiobook when I run, but it, the low is like 77 so when i wake up to run at 6 30 in the morning it's gonna be 77 degrees and i'm like it's a little too hot for me so and i could use a rest day so tomorrow's gonna be a rest day but i am going to my parents house tomorrow so i'll listen to it on the drive there and who knows what else i'll be doing i my sister does work tonight so i have the night to do what i want normally when she's at home we do watch at least one or two shows together so that does eat into my reading time a little bit but i will maybe do some organizing stuff today and listen to my audiobook some more so we'll see but i've been rambling too long i'm gonna go and work on my journal and catch up with you guys when i've read something to update you on
guys, I'm here with Miss Lily. Um, sorry if you just heard that. My sister's getting ready for work. We don't have power and we haven't had power for two hours. It's currently 92 degrees outside. Inside it feels pretty good. It's still like 76 degrees inside. So it's keeping the cool inside. I did like shut our like blinds and stuff so that it would keep the sun out and we're mostly in the shade because we have trees around. So it's been okay, but when is this power gonna come back on? I have no idea, it's like a huge power outage. My friend lives like five minutes away from me. Her power's out. I, there was a storm last night, but I have no idea what else could have caused all this to happen at like 2.30, 3.30, it was around 3.30, because it was right around when my sister woke up. I was trying to get on my computer and I was like, the internet's like not even loading, which never happens in my house. So I don't know if I'm gonna head over to my parents' house. I think they have power, so I'm tempted to just like head over there. Just and take all of our like, fridge stuff over there so that we don't have to throw stuff away in case we're out of power for much longer i don't know though i don't know when to go but also my sister has to leave for work and our garage door shut so we're gonna have to figure out hopefully like manually unlock it and open it and get the cars out which is scaring me because i don't want to break our garage door we got a new garage door like two years ago and i'm like i don't want to hurt our new one but i did end up listening to like four hours of the audiobook so i still have like 12 hours to go but it is so good. I really like Sebastian York. He is the narrator for The Hero, which I really love him. And uh, The Hero is definitely Knox, I think his name is. Knox is very grumpy. He's very wealthy though. He has like, his family like owns the town basically. And people are really mean to her when they first meet her, but then they really like her now that they know who she is, but Knox is still like super grumpy. And it feels single parent because she like has to take care of this 12 year old by herself. And she gets a job working for Knox at his restaurant, which is so funny. And there's just like a lot Lot going on and I am having a lot of fun it's been four hours but I feel like it's not dragging at all I love all the characters Knox has a brother named Nash and they don't really get along and it's it's really is sad though because the heroine's sister is like a really 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 awful person literally it's just like still stole everything from her stole her car ransacked her motel and just left her daughter and so she's a really really bad person but our heroine ran away from the altar apparently so i'm excited to learn more about like why she didn't get married to this guy and like what she's doing and she got a job she's gonna hang out in the town for a while so really like the grump sunshine dynamics i really like Knox. he's a really fun character so I'm really enjoying it. I can see why people love this. Like, I have no complaints so far. I feel like I could love it as well, seeing how the story continues, especially because I have a long time to go. Hopefully it doesn't drag. Hopefully it's like meant to be a long contemporary, even though I don't love, love contemporaries that are like over 500 pages, but we'll see. I will up to you guys once I read more. Maybe from my parents' house, maybe from here with the power back on. I don't know, we'll see. I will chat with you guys later. Hi guys, I don't know how this is gonna work out here. Hopefully it looks okay. Um, I'm still at my parents' house, if you can't tell. I'm a little frustrated um, because AEP apparently cut off our electric on purpose. Um, there was a storm. I don't know if I've already explained it to you. It's been a long day. Um, it's already one. I got up at like six because my mom had to go to work at 6.30, so I was up. And my sister went home after work to my house and the power came on at like 6 30 and i can check because i have my garage app on my phone and so it tells me like when it's offline or online and it was online i was like awesome so it, i had already planned on spending like the morning here anyways i was planning on spending the night in my house and coming over today just to let the dogs run around together we do that once a week but then my sister texted me at 10 30 as she was about to go to bed because she worked the night shift she was like it just went out again so it's been out since 10 30 and it's now almost 1 30 so they're three hours now again and i don't know if it's gonna come back on or not my friend who lives close to me says hers has been on since i don't know she didn't have it when mine came on but apparently it's come on because she says hers is still on right now so i don't know what's going on it's really frustrating they turned it off on purpose because there was a storm and they said to protect the grid because everyone's using a lot more electricity because it's 100 degrees outside they um shut off other power that was fine so that doesn't overload what's been damaged so that meant they chose our power which is interesting because it's not like i don't know if they're like now doing rolling but not telling us they're doing rolling because i was watching a live that aep was doing and they were like don't call it rolling that's a misnomer like blah 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 but my power was on for three hours and then it got shut off again so maybe four hours it was on for four hours and it got shut off again so 
my friends is on right now. She doesn't live too far away from me. I don't know if people's are still on. I was, I've just been looking at Twitter to see people complaining to see what's happening everywhere else. I really don't want to spend more time here because I have stuff I want to do and I just can't do it. I'm like stuck here. I mean, I can read. I did listen to more of my audiobooks. So I actually spent some time. I read about a hundred pages of a PD book about vocab because we are trying to always seeing if we can implement new like vocabulary stuff at school. So I was reading that this morning, but I read for since I was up at like six. Um, for about an hour, I was doing Sudoku because I really wanted to listen to my audiobook. So I was doing the Sudoku Samurai, which is like the five boxes. I really like that. So I did two of those and listened to about three hours of the audiobook. So I only have seven hours left. I'm over halfway through now and I'm really enjoying this book. So what I really like, I kind of, when I think of rom-coms, I think of Megan Quinn. I think how much I don't like rom-coms and I feel like this one is doing like a really good job at balancing the serious and contemporary and the funny. And so it's like a rom-com I like. I don't know if I would call it a rom-com. There were like some really funny moments and um, some characters that came in, like her parents are involved now and it's just like really fun and I really love her niece as well as the character. All these characters are so fleshed out and have so much personality to them and also a lot of past. So even her niece, like we understand her actions and what she goes through because of her past and there was like a conflict with her niece and her teacher and so the heroine got all like crazy on the teacher because she's super protective of her niece because of what her sister, how her sister has raised her and now her parents are in the picture. I'm getting a little bit more about her past and like why she was with this guy she was with, why she ran away from the wedding. Her ex's name is Warner, which I always think is just kind of like a more preppy prestigious guy name. So it feels like perfect for her ex. Just because I always think of Legally Blonde when I hear Warner and like he feels like that kind of character. So I really like it. And I just really like how the romance is developing. Like I don't feel like this book is slow. I just really like the progress the relationships going but there's so much more happening in the story that it doesn't feel like it's dragging because we have so many things going on i don't know how long it's going to take for us to see her sister again i am just like really liking this now i know that Mackie already messaged me saying she didn't like the book so I would like to know why she didn't like this but a bunch of people were excited on Instagram that I was reading this so one of my old co-workers she stopped teaching this year but she read it and she said it's a little too long um but she really enjoyed it so I I feel like that's the consensus with this book it's a good book but does it have to be almost 500 pages is it over 500 pages I don't even remember how long it is because I have the audio but it does not need to be a 16 hour audiobook but it is good so far. I was tempted to get the paperback on Target sale because Target has this book and they're doing buy two get one free. But like I'm already listening to the audiobook and I don't feel like it's going to be like a super all time favorite. I'm really enjoying it and it might be a five star read. But is it something like I'm dying to have in my possession? No. And I don't think Lucy scores going to any signings I'm going to. So I'm not going to. Right now I do have three books in my cart but I'm short of $35 to get free shipping and I don't want to add something I don't need to get free shipping so I have to figure out what I want to add that's not going to be like too much and like a waste of my money. But I have Macaulay Smelter's first book in her one series um, because I'm going to see her at a couple signings. I did enjoy the book that I read by her and I really want to read more by her and then I have Terms and Conditions by Lauren Asher. That one was on Target's website, which I was surprised by. And then there is one of Will and Ash's books, Devney Perry. I pre-ordered two of them for her from Book Bonanza. And uh, one of them that I hadn't pre-ordered is on their website too. So I figured I would get them because they're books that are on my Amazon wishlist anyways that I really want. So definitely added those to my cart and probably will figure out what I want to buy um, at some point today. And I do have a baseball game I'm going to tonight. It is going to be 100 degrees when I go, but... I just want to go out and do something so I feel like I'm just like stuck here and I just hate being stuck here. I love my parents house. I like hanging out with them but I was not prepared to spend more than a night here. I wasn't even prepared to spend the night here. I just like threw my stuff in and went to their house with all the stuff from my fridge. So I just I wanted like I had told you before I was like well maybe I can organize some stuff like go through my books. I definitely want to go through all of my clothes at some point and like get rid of stuff just like as my yearly like clean out because I'm on summer break and I feel like I'm just like wasting my time. I am going to read my Sophie Lark book. I'm just looking forward to I probably have to go home though because I have it don't have like an outfit. I'm not going to wear fantasy romance to this baseball game. I mean, I could. I could just wear this, but I need to get my my baseball hat from my sister. I don't know. Maybe I'll just have her bring stuff over for me. I am happy to have all the puppies. I can show them to you. I have all the dogs with me and they're all super tired because it's super hot outside. So yeah. 
I might show a clip of the game that I go to tonight. I'm really excited. It's just the Columbus Clippers. They're not like a, a major league team, but they always put me in the mood of reading a baseball romance. So I can show you that. But I will go back to reading and hopefully finish my audiobook soon. Who knows when I'll listen to more, but maybe I will. Like, I don't have my bullet journal with me. Like, stuff that I could do while listening, I don't have right now. And it's not like I can, like, take the dogs on a stroll because it's 100 degrees. So it's fine. Maybe I'll do more Sudoku or do something on my computer. I don't know yet, but... I will talk to you guys later, hopefully when my power's on, but we'll see. Hey guys, so I'm home. It is actually, let me open this real quick. I'm home. It is Thursday morning and power kicked back on like 9.30 last night. My sister and I were on our way home from the baseball game that I showed you a little clip of and our garage had connected. So every time I would check my garage app like every 30 minutes because I was like, is it on yet? Is it on yet? And slowly watch it go like seven hours without power, eight hours, nine hours. So we finally got power last night and then I checked the AEP website and they said it's restored. So it's going to stay on. Thank God, because it's again like in the 90s and we had to take all of our stuff back from my parents house including like we cleared our freezer out and my parents have a big freezer in their basement so we just like put all of our bags down there like one of those like big ones that opens like that so had to put all that though in the car so I had to take tons of trips from the basement to my car in 95 degree weather and I ran this morning and oh my god was it a hard run I I run every day I run three miles totally fine I almost had to stop because it was so humid and hot it was it was already 75 which doesn't sound like a lot but when it's humid and 75 I have no idea how people run in the afternoon especially when it's so hot out I run in the mornings at like 50 degree weather is like perfect if it's in the 50s prime running weather I even like running in the 40s even in the 30s I'm like give me the cold weather once it gets to like 65 or higher running outside I hate it so today has been hard uh with all that but because I was running back and forth I just listened to my audiobook and I finished so I do before I get in my thoughts though I needed to share some book mail I got because you guys Catherine Cowles is the absolute best. I love her books. I only recently started getting through a lot of her backlist. My library has a lot of her audiobooks. I recently read Tattered Stars and I really, really enjoyed it. So she sent me all three of her exclusive covers, which or like her alternate covers, which is so, so sweet of her because she's actually already sent me both of these. I have these in the original covers and she sent me them in the alternate with a new one that comes out soon. So I'm really, really excited. I actually want to read this one next. Um, that's what I plan on reading physically because I did already finish Snow by Sophie Lark. I finished that this morning while I was at my parents' house. So I am just so thankful to her because she did not have to send me all three of these and I'm just super excited. So a uh, huge thank you to Catherine for sending me her books and I can't wait to finish the series. I'm super into small town romances right now. Getting onto Things We Never Got Over, this is such a small town romance and I really loved that whole vibe and atmosphere of it. I feel like I don't know if I've seen it. So there were a lot of tropes in here I didn't re realize. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention when people talked about this book. We have fake dating. It's pretty much single parent because she's raising her uh, niece on her own and trying to get custody of her and she's a huge part of the story and we 
we also have small town and like with every small town romance there's a kidnapping at the end and there was a kidnapping in here but it was more like a rom-com small town than like a serious one like these i feel like Catherine cows has more like romantic suspense in them it's a little bit more like serious especially because like one in her other series it's like she's running away from an abusive husband or she's running away from people trying to ruin her life because her dad stole money from people like they were like a lot more serious things and in this one her sister was very over the top that's my only complaint about this book is that her sister felt much like a mustache twirling villain and i'm just like how realistic is this because her sister like it, it had its moments that were funny and i feel like like she was like that for a rom-com this one was like funny enough but not too cheesy and i found myself really enjoying it i don't think I don't know. I feel like if I read this before the hype, I would have given it five stars. But is it worth the ratings and the bestseller ranking and like this is the best book of the year it's not the best book i've read this year but it was such a fun read and i really did enjoy the romance and how grumpy Knox was and how protective Knox was we also it did take a little bit of a serious turn because we got to learn what was the reason behind naomi leaving her fiance and that got a little serious but then Knox got so overprotective and i loved his character and i love nash's character too i'm assuming nash is gonna get the next book because we had in the like bonus epilogue saying like not Nash found his woman but they didn't like say a name or anything so I know series like to do that like Gianna Darling's Fallen Men series does that in their epilogues a lot they'll say like these people are in a relationship but she won't tell you who but we know that they find their HEA so I'm assuming Nash might get the next book but I just really I did really enjoy it I feel like like after reading it and it was a little too long but I never felt like it was slow but I think that's because I listened to the audiobook and I had a lot to do while I was listening to it so I never felt like bored but maybe I'll give it five stars i feel like 4.5 but i'm rounding up to five because it was just so sweet the romance was so good it started out fake dating but really like friends with benefits because they were sleeping together but they weren't like officially together they were just together to show like the adoption people that she was someone who was in a serious relationship that would be a good person to adopt her niece and to show her parents that she was dating him and so it was, i love that aspect and i love the small town aspect everybody was super close and they all hung out at the restaurant slash bar that she worked at and then she worked at the library and Knox was a hair cutter like everybody knew everybody and everybody was like involved in something in the town which I thought was super sweet and I loved Waylay's character it's either there's a dog named Waylon and a daughter named Waylay so I'm pretty sure those were the names but I loved her character she was 11 I think and she was so fun and I really loved her personality and her whole part in the book because a lot of times kids are just used as plot devices or for a conflict for the hero and heroine but the niece really played a strong part in this. I loved how Naomi was really protective of her and realized she really wanted to be her mom and I loved what happened in the epilogue. I don't read books with that enough of that in that of what happened with Naomi and Knox and their kids. I don't want to spoil anything but like I I love that aspect of this book and how they were just so happy as a family and it was really great. I like I don't really have anything bad to say about this book other than the sister felt like a little bit over the top but I get it for a romantic comedy genre and that it was really long but I don't know if it was too long like I don't know what else could have been cut out because like there were scenes that were really important to the book so I was pleasantly surprised. I really enjoy this. I'm excited to read more from Lucy Score and I'm interested have you read the book and did you like it? I am in like my small town era right now. I have been obsessed with small town romances. I just did a small town romance recommendation video on Wednesday. Check that out if you haven't yet. I will link that down below but I it gave me all the small town feels I liked and it was like sweet enough but serious enough and I love a grumpy overprotective hero so I loved Knox so much and so this was just really fun I really enjoyed it and I'm really glad I read it I'm definitely excited to read more of Lucy Scores backlist so let me know what I should start with and that's all I have let me know if you want more of these videos if you like it when I read one book because the last time I did this video it was reading the best-selling book in the Kindle store it's a fun video to do it's really fun to just read one book for you guys so let me know if you want this video again and let me know where I should read Lucy Score next and if you read this book let me know your thoughts and that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day